Hey everyone, today we're going to do Project EV Part 2. So, as you can see here, one of the big things we're going to discuss is the drivetrain, in particular what we're going to bolt onto here, and we're going to actually do some tests and whatnot. And the other thing is, I want to clarify from the previous video, there was a couple questions about the exact goals for this project, so let's go over that. And if you need to catch up, there's a playlist link right over there. First, I want to clarify the goal for this car. So the goal here is to actually take the naturally aspirated record, and this is going to be for all generations of MR2s. Now, the list I'm going by and why I picked an SW20 is MR2 Nation over here. Uh, you can see, basically, I'm going up against anybody that has nothing for power adders in this column. Currently, this is SW20s, but if for some reason an AW11 or a ZZW30 comes up above the list, then that's the competition. I'm, I'm going to be the top person on this list with nothing in the power adder category. And that means that right now, Stephen Miller with that 11.6 is the time to beat. And the reason I'm picking a second gen is actually for a couple of reasons. First, um, as you can see on that record list that we saw just a second ago, it really is the dominant MR2 in this list. So I don't want to end up with a record and have somebody say, oh, well, yeah, but you did it with a ZZW30 instead of an SW20. Now, I don't, I don't want to deal with any of that, so I'm going to try to beat it with what the current record holder is. Uh, and the other thing is the engine bay in the SW20 is much, much bigger. So it'll leave us room, a lot more room up front, uh, if we want to get into some shenanigans with turbos down the line. Uh, and the other big thing is we can actually take the valve cover off in chassis. So as we're trying different cams and whatnot, we can do it without pulling the motor out of the car. And of course, the other advantage of using the second gen is that it's not a convertible. So I'm a lot less likely to have problems at the drag strip. It's a lot easier. It can be a lot easier to pass tech and whatnot. So that just avoids that whole world of problems. And frankly, the second gen looks a little bit better. So I think the third gen handles better on the track, but this is the drag strip. So we're not going on a road course with this. So now let's actually make some progress on this thing. Uh, first thing we need to do is we're going to figure out what transmission we're going to put on here. We've got four choices. We've got the S54, the E153, the EB60, and the EA60. Uh, technically, it's also the EB62, but I'm really counting those as one choice. And uh, for a couple of reasons here, I want... I want to make this thing so that as many of you guys can replicate this as you can without making it too expensive. So really the EB and the EA, I want to pull those out of the equation for now. We might eventually go to that, especially, well, probably not the EB, but the EA. If we start having issues with breakages and whatnot, that EA is really a pretty bulletproof transmission. So, but for now, I think our choices are S54 and E153. Now the S54, for as good of a transmission as it is, it's not exactly known for putting up to drag racing launches. So let's put that off the table for now. And let's see if the E153 will bolt to here, right? Because if we have to make a bunch of adapters and everything, then we might as well use the EB or the EA. So let's get to that. So I've got some uh, 3 8 dowel pins here. Uh, the motor actually takes 10 millimeters, but 3 8 is a half millimeter under, makes it easier to uh, slide the transmission on and off. So let's start with an old E-153. So as you can see, we've got one bolt in here and the two dowel pins line up. So that's great. That's a good place to start. Now, if we keep going around here, we can see there's a hole here. Now this hole is not threaded, but it could get threaded. Um, there's also, let's see. There's a hole here, and that is threaded, and there's a hole that goes from the back here that is threaded in the lines. Um, nothing here, nothing here. Okay, so that's, let's see if we got something coming from the other side. No, we don't. Okay, so not not a huge fan of that, right? We got an M10. We tap this for an M10. Uh, this is another uh, M10. And here's an M12. 
we have just barely over 180 degrees of engagement between this one and this one. Actually, no, it's actually under 180 degrees, maybe 170 degrees. Not so great. So let's go ahead and take this one off and let's put a later E153 bell housing on here and see what we can do with that. So let's see what we're looking at right here. So we still have this one. Uh, we still have this one, obviously. And that's still good. This is still good, but we've added one hole down here and another one about here. And let's see if we've added something over here. Uh, no, no, we haven't. Okay, so that's actually, that's got me pretty comfortable, right? So we've got from here, yeah, we've got like 270 degrees worth of bolts. Um, and we've got plenty of bolts on the bottom to support the weight of this. Yeah. It also looks like we're going to have to shave the block right here for the um, clutch slave. Something that's interesting there, actually. Um, I know my Australian customers have complained that the clutch slave for the E-Series wipes out the serial number for the motor. And that's apparently a problem in your country. So it's good to know that here you're really just taking a chunk out of the block here that has nothing to do with the serial number. The serial number in the VIN plates up here. And that's going to clear just fine. Next, let's talk about the motor. So this motor right here is actually what we're gonna run on day one. Um, obviously, I'm gonna build a motor. There's no way in hell this is gonna take the record on its own, um, but I don't have the motor right now. I'm still waiting. I've still got several weeks to wait before I have parts available. This motor right here, I know is a good strong runner. You can actually see it run right there. Um, the, uh, the whole team that I was running with, we actually won our class at IMS with this thing. And uh, that was, Absolutely wonderful. So this motor, it's out of a 2012 Scion TC. We know it's a strong runner. I haven't, I mean, I haven't done anything to it. Um, I might clean it a little bit just so that I'm not getting all this stuff over me when I'm installing it in the car, but otherwise not gonna worry about it. All right, so now we've got a transmission. Next thing we gotta do is, I don't wanna go into custom pieces yet. Uh, we might have to do that to beat the record down the line but what can we optimize with pieces I have laying around? So I've got, I think all the three final drives, the uh, 4.285, uh, 3.933 and 3.625 that are available for this thing sitting around in the shop. And I probably have some different uh, first through fifth gear. I know I've got the E53, but I think I've got a lot less of those than I have of the, the final drives. So how do we pick one? Well, I think we just want to optimize for the launch. So what we know is Lucas Oil Raceway, unless it's a specific day where they're doing the prep, the uh, Wild Wednesdays, which is what we're gonna be doing at first, the prep is not so good. Also at first, I'm just gonna be running leftover tires from the circuit racing that I do. So pretty sticky and I do have a pretty reasonable supply of them. So they're always gonna be fresh. I tend to buy three to four sets a year. So I can always have a fresh set on this thing. But in my mind, I think what we need to shoot for is first gear at about 1G, anything above that, and we're just gonna risk blowing off the tires. Now, that could be entirely wrong, but I have to start somewhere. So that seems like a sane, just a sane guess to start with. So now, next thing we know is the car weight. So if we look at Eric's car right here, this is actually something he posted a couple weeks ago, and you can see he's got his car down to 2,040 pounds. That's a huge difference from where we're starting, but obviously this is possible. So let's use that as a number for now. And we know that this motor puts out 210 foot pounds of torque to the ground. That's unlikely to change as we make more power. I mean, it'll make 220, 230 or so, but it's not gonna change dramatically. The amount of torque a motor makes is generally fixed by the displacement and then what you change by changing the, the geometry, the intake and the exhaust is you change where in the RPM band it makes that power because the higher in the RPM band you make it, the more horsepower you make. So 210 foot pounds of torque, if we put that to the ground, we aiming for one G, what we find is that the 3.625 gear that we can get in the E153 will give us about 1.1 G of acceleration. And then that also allows us to take first gear 
as far as we can to about 55 miles an hour. Uh, that's spinning at 8,600 RPM. I think we're gonna end up spinning faster than that by the time we take the record, but that's something that I know I've safely done. Uh, we're not gonna do on this motor, right? Because I haven't done any valve train modifications. This we're just gonna do 7,200 RPM, but 55 miles an hour is gonna be doable very soon. As soon as we put the next motor in, we're gonna be good for that and possibly a little bit more. The other decision we're gonna make today is the ECU. So we're gonna go ahead and use a Haltech Elite 1500. And I'm not gonna go for a bigger one because they are pinout compatible. So if I wanna change to a bigger one at a later date, it's actually pretty easy to do so. And I think this will give me enough output. The other thing I really like about this ECU, it's really proven itself in the last couple races that I've done. This thing feels, when operated in mass airflow mode, it feels 100% like a factory ECU. Now, of course, that depends on how you tune it, of course, but it doesn't have any of the annoyances that I've ever had in the past with aftermarket ECUs. It just feels great. So while of course this is a drag car and we can deal with a lot of compromises, I love these ECUs, so I will be using one of these. And the follow-up to that, of course, is the wiring harness. So over here, I've got a wiring harness. Um, honestly, I don't remember. This might be out of a Scion or out of a Camry. It's probably a Camry, simply because they're a lot more common. But it doesn't really matter. What we're going to do is we're going to chop this plug off and then we're probably going to reuse some of these or another generic Toyota plug that I can find both ends for. Kind of go digging through my collection because obviously I want the harness to be able to be removed from the engine easily. So the key to that is making sure you've got the right connections. And then this build, right, to get down to 2,040 pounds or less, we have to conserve weight as much as possible. And that harness, there's what, seven pounds of wiring in there. And normally the harness goes, you know, it starts here at the, uh, the water pump and it goes up to the alternator. It picks up the coils on top. It picks up the injectors and these, and then it comes off here, right off the head here, there's a bracket. And then it goes to a fuse box here. Now in the MR2, there is indeed a fuse box right there. That's the one in the engine bay. But we're going to dramatically reduce the amount of wiring in the car. So that part we're gonna go ahead and do right now. We're gonna make a custom harness and it's gonna come off the head right about here. And it's gonna go, cause the firewall is gonna be right about, oh, sorry, firewall is gonna be right about here. So we'll be able to use a nice short little harness, go inside the car, mount the ECU right there. So before I get deep into that, is anybody planning on replicating what I'm doing here? I'd love for some of you guys to follow along and copy these things. And at the end of the day, Frankenstein Motorworks is a business, you know? I'd love to be able to sell you a Haltech ECU and you can use the, uh, the wiring diagrams that I make and the instructions that I put together if you want to copy. But I'm not convinced that this, this exact thing, this drag build and whatnot will be something that people are going to want to follow along as far as actually building their own. Now, <clears throat> if you've got a simpler build and you do want to buy a Haltech ECU from me, um, at any point, right, I've got, I've got tunes for stock 2ARs now, I've got tunes for slightly hopped up 2ARs, and I'm only going to keep developing a larger library of these tunes. You know, even if you don't replicate this, you can buy this from me, and I'll be happy to give you a base tune to go along with it. And then, of course, on the other topic of following along, it would be nice, even if you're not planning on doing this drag build here, uh, there's going to be a motor mount here that I'm going to have to develop. I could easily just whip this up in the shop for myself, but I think other people are interested in doing a 2AR swap in the MR2, the second gen MR2. So if you're interested, please speak up in the comments so that I can turn this thing into a production mount and have that available on my store. Um, and if there's any other parts that you're thinking that you'd want to buy as a result of this without building the whole thing, um, I do know things like the camshafts, the, when I posted about those, because I've got those 10 sets of camshafts coming, there was huge interest. So I've heard you guys loud and clear. Um, I'm not quite clear which power level you guys are looking for. Um, I think the first one I'm probably going to put in production is going to be the, the, uh, 
the grind number two that I had talked about before, which is the one that should get about 250 wheel horsepower on an otherwise stock engine. Um, if it doesn't get it on an otherwise stock engine from the Scion TC, it might need the um, uh, you to start with the 2AR FXC, the 12 and a half to one compression ratio engines. But between one of those, you should be able to get 250. I mean, I know what it takes to get to 241 horsepower to the ground. So being able to say that we'll get nine more horses confidently, that's not too much of a stretch. So, you know, <laughs> being able to say that we're confidently going to get this thing to 350 wheel horsepower, that's a lot more of a stretch. I've got some cams that I think will get me there, but I'm not making any guarantees. So something else I wanted to mention, uh, down in the description, there's going to be a link to a Discord server that you can join if the comment section down here is not really enough for discussing what you want to discuss about either this one or the 2GR second gen or the 2AR third gen or honestly any kind of car talk. We kind of go off, off the rails sometimes. Um, feel free to join that Discord. Uh, I'm there fairly regularly almost every day and uh, we can chat about the progress on this thing and I also I help people put finish their swaps, their, their second gen and their third gen whatnot. Um, that's been working really well. So come on and join us down there. And uh, other than that, there's also going to be a link to FrankensteinMotorworks.com if you just want to buy the parts to follow along to either this build. Of course, as of the posting of this, those parts are not available. But if you're looking at this in the future, they will be. Um, <clears throat> or the 2GR in the second gen or the 2AR, this motor here in the third gen. So. If you want to go and buy any of those parts, I'd certainly appreciate it. Uh, the uh, the store, FrankensteinMotorworks.com, is what's really sponsoring this. I mean, I am Frankenstein Motorworks. It's just me. It's a one-man band. So I'd really appreciate it. It lets me continue doing this kind of stuff if, uh, if you can do that. So, all right. Have a great day. We'll see you guys in the next one. I think in the next one, we're going to take this and we're finally going to drop it in EV.